Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. April is National Autism Awareness Month. In the U.S., autism affects one in every 110 children. Autism Awareness Month aims to make the public more aware about this epidemic and the issues which arise in the autism community. My next guest is Ronnie Thompson, who is the founder of Athletes for Autism Foundation. Good morning, Ronnie. Good morning, how are you? I'm doing well. I thank you so much for being here. And if you would, tell us more about Athletes for Autism and how you serve families. Well, Athletes for Autism uh, started about three years ago, mm -hmm. and we serve families by, uh, we have a fitness center now, which is the 770 North Jefferson, and what we do is we train kids one-on-one. -on -one and create programs for the kids and individuals to help them in their needs. Okay, and so within your organization, you say everyone is an athlete. So how do you, in fact, incorporate sports and fitness into a regimen for children, adults, and family affected by autism? Well, some of these kids uh, like to work out. They want to um, play sports at their school. So what we do, we give them an the opportunity to train them mm -hmm. so they'd be able to do that one-on-one -on -one training, Pilates classes. Um, you know, yoga classes. So we do all these things to help them with their coordination, you know, and other things that they like to do when okay. it comes to sports. So you uh, are dedicated to fitness in your own life. Uh, why was it important for you to create an organization like Athletes for Autism? Uh, because as I did research for autism, I learned that um, these kids don't have the opportunity to have a facility that they can go to. Mm -hmm. So I created it because it doesn't exist. And it helps exercise and nutrition helps everyone. So Absolutely. taking it into that arena, it helps them also. And like I said, mm -hmm. you're really into fitness yourself. You were recently in uh, training some type for of Iron Man, yes. Iron mm -hmm. Man. Yes. So mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you do realize uh, how uh, fitness can change uh, just your energy level and everything. How has um, research shown you in watching kids over the years how fitness changes uh, a child with autism's level of energy and how they uh, go about their day-to-day -day activities? Well, exercise helps everyone. Mm -hmm. um, with In autism, these kids don't get the chance to leave home. The parents are stuck with them on a regular basis, 24 hours, and when it comes to social skills and other skills, exercise helps. So when mm -hmm. they come in our into our fitness center, they get to play, they get to move around, they get to exercise, they get to do things that they don't normally get to do. It's yeah. an obesity problem in autism and uh. and these kids just sit up and they don't do anything on a daily basis so we give them that outlet to come to. So. I think that's wonderful mm -hmm. and studies show that up to half of children with autism are placed on special diets by their parents in some cases to improve symptoms and you have a diet and nutrition program that's set up within your organization. Tell us more about that. Well, well what we do that you know to have to have a nutrition program, we just try to get them to change their mindset. Mm -hmm. So basically, we just work with the parents because in some cases, some of these kids um, are just comfortable with what they eat, whether it's chicken McNuggets or, or cookies or sweets. So what we try to do is educate the parents that it's okay to change these kids and get them out of their comfort zone. Yeah, and I'm sure for a lot of parents it's challenging to change certain things because mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, parents who have autistic children mm -hmm. and one thing that seems like a common denominator is sometimes they are uh, really into repetitive things. You have to do things the same way and right. even that goes along with food in mm -hmm. some cases. Uh, a lady that I knew in my old neighborhood, she said she could go to the store and get a different type of chicken mm -hmm. and her son knew mm -hmm. and he wouldn't eat them. So I'm sure do you ever hear from the parents that they have a hard time changing some of the things that maybe the kids really like? Yes, all the time. And what we try to do, I don't think these kids with autism is not the issue. I think mm -hmm. it's the parents who are um, such in a comfort zone with what these kids do on a regular basis that they don't know how to get, how to get out of this comfort mm -hmm. zone. So what we do, we try to educate the parents now that it's okay to make a change in these kids' lives. Okay, all right. And you collaborate with trainers and physical therapists to create programs that actually involve physical therapy. So what's the approach from the physical therapy standpoint on uh, getting these kids to a different place? Well, we have an athletic director now who um, teaches, she works for a therapy 
organization. And so what she does, we partnered up with Marquette and UWM, and so we get interns to come in that we teach them through her to work how to work out with the kids. Mm -hmm. So that's that's our method. We just create programs according to what the kid needs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what's some of the feedback that you get from parents who have actually been bringing your children and involving them into the program? And I should say, uh, not just from the child standpoint, because mm -hmm. when you have a child with any type of special need, it does affect the entire family. Right. So uh, what's been the feedback that you've received? Well, it's like revelations. We get emotional feedback. Uh, some of the kids that come into our program, parents have never seen a kid do these things. Mm. They didn't even think the kid could do it. Mm -hmm. So just what we take for granted on a daily basis with exercise, these parents are seeing something new in their homes when they bring their kids into our program. Okay, and I just heard Russell Simmons talking about his new book on meditation mm -hmm. and how important it is for success. Right. So you guys incorporate yoga and meditation into some of your programs yes. as well. Talk about that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a program that's just beginning, mm -hmm. so we haven't really seen any results from that, but it's a program that will be existing over the spring and the summer, uh -huh. so we will be having results by the end of the year. So something mm -hmm. that definitely uh, people can look forward to, yes. and this is a great time for someone who may be watching and wants to get their child involved. How, in fact, do they go about doing that? Um, what they do, they can reach out to athletesforautismfoundation.org, mm -hmm. which is our um, website or they can call me personally at 414-803-9676. Our location of our fitness center is at 770 North Jefferson downtown. Okay, so you mm -hmm. just opened this fitness center and mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what was that like for you? Because you've actually been growing over the years. How long has this organization been in uh, effect? Three years. Three we years partnered now. with the Wisconsin Athletic Club for about a year and a half. And yeah, to open up a fitness center, which it was a dream come true, uh, really gives these kids an opportunity to know that they have their own place to mm -hmm. come to. Because again, this does not exist in this country, um, uh, a fitness center for kids with autism. Yes, and that leads me to ask you about uh, you serving as a blueprint in some ways. Um, We've talked in the past, and I think mm -hmm. that uh, there are some cities that are in the surrounding areas that are interested in adopting some of the things that you've done here in Milwaukee. Right, yeah, we talking to some people out of Detroit mm -hmm. who has a video and photography company who wants to incorporate that to give job opportunities for kids with autism. So what they would do is work with us to do this in their city by using Athletes for Autism floor mat I love exercise that. to go forward and get jobs making making that available for kids. And I think it's so important to think uh, in regards of jobs because autistic mm -hmm. children become autistic adults and they right. need the opportunity to be able to uh, have some sort of independence and be able to work just like everyone else. Absolutely. So I think what you're doing is outstanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a good time to talk about a big event that you've got coming up on mm -hmm. April 17th. Uh, you're celebrating World Autism Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. uh, fill us in on that event. Well, we have an event at the Hotel, which is uh, from 6 to 10 on April 17th, mm -hmm. um, with uh, celebrity bartenders, and we're bringing in a guy named Eric Luck, who's nonverbal but artistic, and he's going to be the entertainment for that night. Then we're bringing in this kid named Marquise, who's doing the poetry for that night. So we're pretty excited about uh, utilizing these kids and their and their gifts yeah. to to be the people that's going to be the entertainment for the evening. So. And Eric, look, I believe he's also going to be singing the national anthem at the uh, Autism Speaks event yes. in, on April 5th. So yes. he's definitely making his way around. Yes. And he plays the piano. Yes, he does. And mm -hmm. very, very talented young very man. Very talented. And this just goes to uh, show that uh, the levels are the spectrums of autism mm -hmm. go from on many different levels. So you right. have individuals who uh, maybe need help their entire life but mm -hmm. then uh, on the flip side, they've got some really great gifts that they're sharing with all of us. Correct. Yes. I love mm -hmm. it. And uh, with this music at Light It Up Blue, you did talk about Eric Look and another young man. Um, how, in fact, are you teaming up with the Milwaukee Wave uh, in doing this particular event? Well, Milwaukee Wave has um, been a part of our organization since uh, 
the whole the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing, they're bringing in uh, Sue Black would probably be one of the, the uh, celebrity bartenders, and they're bringing in uh, different um, auction gifts for us, like uh, to work with the kids. Like they said that they will be coming in to give two week passes mm -hmm. for the kids to do soccer. Um, seminars and stuff like that so they're working with us a hundred percent I love that mm -hmm. and you guys uh, have teamed up in not just a way that you have uh, the athleticism and mm -hmm. the the concept of uh, being athletic and doing sports but you also have a Milwaukee Wave player who has an autistic brother so this is really something special uh, in that sense as well right uh, Nick Pereira is a uh, he has a brother who's uh, an adult mm -hmm. and he's in San Diego and he is supporting us 100%. So it was exciting to get him to be a part of our organization, yes. Yes, and before we wrap up, I just want everyone to know, uh, I asked you earlier why mm -hmm. this was important for you to create Athletes for Autism, mm -hmm. uh, but you also had a very personal story mm -hmm. and you wanted to really change the lives of children through the loss of your own. Right, yes, I lost a daughter uh, in 2009 mm -hmm. uh, from a tragedy, a bad car accident. So after that happened, I just wanted to do something extraordinary. But the goal would be if the real goal for autism, helping autism, if we can get every organization to collaborate together instead of separately working individually to try to help the cause. I think if all of us would just get together to, tr to just really try to do something to make a difference, it would make a huge difference in the autism community. Instead of us working separately to um, do our own thing, I think all these kids, they're not going anywhere. They're, um, they're gonna, some of them uh, be with their parents the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that if it's not affecting you now, trust me, it will be affecting you later because these kids are not, they're not going anywhere. All right, well I certainly thank you for mm -hmm. coming by today and sharing great information on your organization and all the things that you're mm -hmm. doing to make a difference. Well, you really are me. doing something miraculous. Okay. And Ronnie Thompson is the founder of Athletes for Autism Foundation. Okay. Another reminder, Athletes for Autism's Light It Up Blue event is happening on April 17th from 6 to 10 p.m. at Blue Top of the Fister Hotel. For more information, log on to athletesforautismfoundation.org or call 414-80 3-9676. That is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Thank you for watching, and I hope you join us again next week as we take a look at our issues, Milwaukee. Have a great day.